Hi, I'm Glenn Dewis and welcome to episode 14 of my video podcast. <laughs> okay, so this week what I want to do is show you two techniques. In fact, no, maybe one technique, but two uses for it. You see, one of the things I absolutely love about Photoshop is how you can play, you can have fun, but those techniques that you play and have fun with have also got like a real world retouching scenario where you can actually put them to use. And that's what I want to cover. I want to actually show you, first of all, how you can create a beard on somebody, but then use exactly the same technique to enhance eyes and make eyes that have kind of like lost their detail, use it on those to make the eyes really, really stand out, which is obviously really important when we're doing portrait shots. So let's just first of all in this part, show you how you create the beard. Now I've got a picture of my buddy Dave Clayton here. It's not the best picture of Dave, but it's perfect for this particular technique. And let's face it, if you've got a picture of Dave on your hard drive, you've just got to do something with it. So let's just use this one because it's a great way to show you. So what I'm going to do then, first of all, oh, first of all, before I actually kick off, just want to mention that the technique I'm going to show you now it's one that I actually learned from a guy called Steve Kaplan, a very, very well-known retoucher based in the UK who does a lot of work for the newspapers. And Steve's got some great books out there. And this technique is in one of his books called How to Cheat in Photoshop. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you take a look at it because it's got loads of techniques in there that are great fun, but also lots of techniques and learning points in there as well, which will really help with your development and how you learn Photoshop. And I've always had a look at those books ever since they started. So let me show you this technique. This is how Steve did it. Here's our picture of Dave. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all uh, create a blank layer. Now, I need to paint the shape of the beard first of all onto Dave with a grey, 50% uh, grey. And the way I do that is first of all, you'll see over in my toolbar on the left hand side here, my foreground and background colour are set to their default of black and white. So to get 50% grey, I'm going to click on the foreground colour, my black. And here you can see it says HSB, which is my hue, saturation and brightness. If I change the brightness to 50, that then gives me a 50% grey. And you can see that in the upper part of this segment here where we've got our new colour. So I'm going to click OK. Then I'm just going to get a brush and I'm going to make sure that I'm painting with the brush. Let's just make sure the settings, it's 0% hardness. And I'm just going to adjust the size of it using my left and right bracket keys. So what I'm going to do first of all, then just paint a rough shape of a beard on Dave. I don't have to be worried about being too accurate with it because I can always shape it a little bit later after it's been painted in. So let's just paint the beard in there and we'll come in and give him a bit of a moustache shape as well. Now obviously if we're doing work in Photoshop we want to work non-destructively so I would probably use a mask when I'm doing this now but for just for speed and that's the only reason I'm just going to use an eraser, eraser here, a razor brush just to paint it away. So let, let's just quickly shape it, take it off his ears. Although I have noticed the older I'm getting I'm getting hair in my ears. Uh, but we'll take it off Dave just to uh, be polite. So let's just move it off here, shape it a little bit on the side there so he's got those sideburns, like so. And I might add, add just a little bit more on this bottom part here. So that's his beard. The next thing I'm going to do is go to the filter menu and choose noise and add noise. Now, the kind of noise that you want, in the noise filter here, we can. I'm using CC, Photoshop CC, we can go way up to 400%. I reckon around about 200 would be enough for this. But the kind of look you're going for is, I don't know if you guys remember, but years ago when it got to the end of the TV, at the end of night when all the programs had finished, you'd get that kind of like shh kind of noise when you say goodnight from the BBC and you end up with this kind of like patterning this noise here that's the kind of look you want to go for but around about the 200% mark is absolutely fine and then click OK. Now the crucial part when you're doing this the next thing is you're going to get an elliptical marquee from the toolbar on the left hand side. Now for where that is it's the second option down and when you click on the out, down arrow you get like a few extra little marquees that you can use and it's the second option. I'm going to hold down my shift key and drag it out to around about that kind of size. And then once I've dragged it out, I'm gonna get my space bar where I can move it around. And I'm gonna put the middle of it so that I'm gonna, I'm gonna sort of say that maybe the moustache area is the middle. I wanna put the middle of my marquee over and then let go. So now anything that I do within Photoshop will only happen within this area. And this is important, certainly when we now do some blurring. So the next thing I'm gonna do then is go to the filter menu, go to blur and then radial blur. 
Now when you choose this by default, you'll probably notice it's set to spin. And this is the one that a lot of people will use when they're trying to maybe make it look like uh, wheels on a car are spinning when they've originally photographed it still. You can add this radial blur here to make it look as if the wheels are spinning. But we want the one that's got zoom. So if we click on zoom, and I actually call this my uh, Star Wars filter because it gets that kind of look that on the films when the start when the spaceship zoomed away at, at sort of like light speed they went like, whoosh, like this in fact it's probably best to call it the Star Trek filter I've just seen the new Star Trek film and that's uh, that's the kind of look yes okay we'll call it the Star Trek filter um, and I'm gonna go this is a high-res picture and I'm gonna go for anything around about 10 to 15 on the amount and we'll go with so let's go for let's go for 15 and click OK so now you get this kind of effect on the beer and it doesn't look like anything at the minute but what we'll do is we'll go select and deselect and now we're going to come over to the layers panel and we're going to change the blend mode for this beard layer here from normal to hard light. So when we zoom in you can see that there's like a little bit of growth there. I might just get my razor tool now and just tidy up the edges and we'll take it off just a little bit more off those areas just the soft that are going onto the background and a little bit more off his ears. There you go. So now that we've got that, what we can do is we can go to an adjustment uh, level here and I can go to my mid-tone slider and go, right, there's one day's growth, there's two days, there's three days, there's four days, and so on. So it's just a bit of fun. But I've actually used this in a real picture. There was one that I shot a good, um, I shot a did of a guy that I wanted to be come to the studio with like a five o'clock shadow, like a day's growth or so. He turned up completely clean shaven. So I've used this technique to give him a little bit of a five o'clock shadow. I suppose when you're really, really close up, it doesn't really look that realistic. But if you're using this on like a, a three quarter length shot or a full length shot, you could certainly, as Joel Grimes says, sell the fake and make it look as if he did have some stubble. But you can really have some fun with this. There's a little bit of a beard and then you could be really cool and then go to the colorize with the hue and saturation here. Make sure we add it to a clipping mask. The so Photoshop only affects the layer directly beneath, which is the beard. And then give Dave a bit of a tint to his beard here as well. In fact, between you and me, I think this is a colour that Dave Beard goes when he grows it, but I didn't tell you that. So we'll go for something like that. So that's the fun part. Let's just have a quick commercial break, and then I'll show you how you can use this exact same technique to enhance eyes and really make them pop. Hi guys, I'm Glyn Dewis and I'm a photographer, researcher and trainer from the UK and I just want to take a few moments of your time to let you know about a brand new full length downloadable tutorial I've just released called Supercar Retouching. Now in this tutorial, which is roughly an hour and a half to two hours long, I take you through the whole retouching steps from the out of camera picture all the way through to the finished retouch. Now we're gonna go through everything. We're gonna have a look behind the scenes so you can have a look at exactly where we were photographing, what equipment was used, what settings were used, and then taking that finished image over into Lightroom or Camera Raw to then start preparing it. We're gonna look at bringing out details, how to shape the light, how to do some sharpening, and much, much more before then we go up a gear and head over into Photoshop. Because that's when we then realistically add in a new sky, we show you, I'll show you how to add realistic reflections on the side of the car and in the windows. Also how to deal with problem areas where we ended up with like a hot spot on the back of the car caused by the really bright sunlight on the day. We then move on to doing uh, colour effects and also I'll show you how to use plugins but non-destructively. And then we finish off with that cartoon kind of painterly look. Now included in this tutorial are the raw files. So you're also gonna be able to carry on and do these steps yourself. You also get a full layered Photoshop file amongst other things within this download. There's a couple of bonus videos in there as well. You'll also be able to take all these retouching steps and use them on your own images, just like I have in this picture here of an Aston Martin V12. So guys, that's Supercar Retouching, available now on my website, glyndewis.com.
So now then, let's have a look at how we can use that technique to enhance eyes. And we're gonna do that on this picture here that you can see on screen. This is actually a very good friend of mine, a girl called Chanel Fusco, who's an R&B singer. And the shoot we did for this particular shot was to do some more cover artwork for a CD and a new album that was coming out. Now, as it happens, I mean, Chanel's got absolutely stunning eyes, but if I'm honest, my lighting sucked on the day and I've lost all the detail in her eyes. So they've gone very, very black. Whereas really, there's lots of detail in her eyes and they're a beautiful light brown kind of color. So here's how we can use that technique then and how I actually did in the end to enhance Chanel's, um, Chanel's eyes. So just as before with the beard technique, we add a blank layer. Then I'm gonna get my elliptical marquee tool. I'm gonna to make a selection of her eyes. Of course, I could paint it in using a brush, but let's just make it nice and easy. The middle of the eyes is round so we can use an elliptical marquee. So I'm gonna hold down my shift key to get a perfect circle. And I can also use my space bar, space bar to drag it around. So let's just position it. And I'm gonna get it so that it's not completely surrounding it. I always leave a little bit of a gap around the outside so we can get like a nice darkening of the eye just around the outside. It makes the eyes pop just a little bit more. So once we've got the elliptical marquee in place, I'm then gonna to go to edit and fill, and I'm gonna choose 50% gray from the drop down menu and click okay. And I'm gonna keep the noise, the sorry, the, um, uh, the marching ants going around this selection at the moment. Then I'm gonna to go to the filter menu, choose noise and add noise. Now because this is a smaller area now than what we did on the beard, we don't need to be so high up on the amount. We can bring that quite a bit down and I'll probably go for around about 50, something like that. But this is just trial and error, you see what works best with you. And I'll click OK. Then we go to our Star Trek filter. So we go to the filter, blur and radial blur and we'll choose where it's got the zoom setting. And again, we don't really wanna go any more than about 10 to 15. And on this one, I'm just gonna go for, let's try 10 first of all, see if that's okay. Now obviously I'm using a filter, so I could, if I'm gonna be um, work smart here, use that as a smart filter so that I can come in and make changes to it at a later stage. But I'm just gonna leave that out just for the purpose of doing this demonstration. So I'll click okay. Now if I just zoom in on that eye, I actually think, yeah, I need to add it just a little bit more. In fact, I might do that again. So when I go to the filter menu, you can see that the last one you've used here is Command or Control F. So do you know what? I know I said don't go above 10 or 15. I think actually for this one, we do need to. So I'll eat my words there. We'll click on Command, uh, Command or Control F. We've got a keyboard shortcut there just to reapply it. So that's the filter applied. We can now go to Select and Deselect. And then we can change the blend mode over here on the layers panel. Over on the right hand side, we'll change the blend mode of this layer from normal to hard light. So straight away, you can see you get this kind of like textured effect within the eye. Now at the moment, that looks a little bit too much, but you can see if I kind of jump ahead at the moment, if I reduce the opacity, we can see we are, like Joel Grimes says, selling the fake. And we're kind of creating that fake texture that you see within an eye. But we'll keep it at 100% just for now, because there's a couple of things we need to do. Obviously, we need to take it off certain parts of the eye. Now, because we also want to maybe do this on the other eye, what we are going to do is use a layer mask. And then I'm gonna get a brush, and I'm just gonna reduce the size of my brush using my left bracket key, and I'm gonna paint in black just to remove it off the uh, eyelashes there, and maybe just a little bit on the bottom. Sometimes I actually go round the outside of it just a little bit, just to soften that edge down so it kind of blends in a lot more naturally with the eye. And of course, we need to knock out the middle of it just to allow the pupil to show through just there. So there we go, now we can lower the opacity and you can see that we've already started to add some detail into the eye. But we can actually take it a stage further, like we did when we added that color onto the beard we did with Dave. So I can now go to a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Now I need to make sure that I click on colorize, because if I don't click on colorize, when I, in fact, I'm first of all we're gonna click on colorize. The most important thing is, just backtracking for a second, is this thing down here, this clipping mask. Because you'll see, once I first of all click on colorize, the whole of the picture has color applied to it. But obviously I only want the color to be applied to this texture that I'm applying onto the eye. So what I can do is I can say to Photoshop, only affect the layer directly beneath you. And we do that by adding clipping masks. Two ways we can do that. One way is to actually use the icon here in the properties dialog box here for hue and saturation. We can click on that and you'll see now we get this little downwards facing arrow, which means that this hue and saturation is only affecting the layer directly below. Now, if you can't find that, 
for some reason you can't find it depending on what version of Photoshop you're using. You can also add a clipping mask by putting your cursor in between the two layers that you want to work on. And then you hold down your Alt or your Option key. And you'll see this little icon popping up if you look over to my Layers panel now. When you click, then it also adds that clipping mask there. So now we can come in and we can change the color. You can see I can use this slider now to affect the color of our eyes. And I'm probably gonna make this a little bit stronger just so you can see it clearly on the video. So we'll go for something around about there. And let's just zoom out. So you can, what we'll do is, again, keep everything nice and tidy. We've got two layers here that have worked on this eye. So I'm gonna hold down my Shift key now to click on the layer below and then go to the fly out menu at the top of the layers panel and choose new group from layers. And I'll call that I1 and click OK. So now you can see I can turn that group on and off like so, so you can see the effect. I can also lower the opacity or the strength, if you like, of that whole group so that the effect isn't quite so strong or I can actually dial it into taste. But the great thing here is as well, I don't need to repeat all those steps to do the other eye. All I need to do is press Command or Control J to duplicate that, like, that group there that worked on the eye, get my Move tool from the toolbar and drag it across. And then I can use my left and right arrow keys, up and down arrow keys to reposition it. Now because we, added, we used a layer mask initially, let's just close this out of the way here. Because we used a layer mask, if you find there's areas where you, you've got like, um, maybe the eyebrow is maybe, oh, sorry, the eyelashes are a bit lower and you need to paint in some of the effect because it's missing, because we use this layer mask just here, we can paint in a white or a black brush to bring some of that texture back or to remove it where we don't want it. So there you go, that's just two techniques in one really there, using one technique to add a beard, showing you how we can also use it to enhance eyes. Because let's face it, when we're working on portraits, we really need those eyes to pop. Okay, so thanks for checking out this particular episode. As always, if you've got any questions or comments, drop me a line to glynn at glynnjewish.com or leave a comment in the comment section below. And if there's any tips, tricks or techniques you'd like to see in future episodes, again, just drop me a line and I'll see what I can do. Now, as for subscribing, you know the score. Make sure that you click on the subscribe button, which is around about in this area here. And from then on, once you've clicked it, you'll never miss out on any videos that I post on my YouTube channel. That'll be this kind of weekly show that I've got or any extra videos, reviews, and extra little tips and tricks I also post out as well. Um, but that's it. That's about it for this week. I'm going to go for a walk now. So uh, whatever you're up to, have a good one and I'll see you next time. Come on, I'm trying to be creative. Ten fingers and one, two, three, four. Just being creative. That's all.